den site um, and they might be excavating and checking there uh, while this lot makes sure that there are no other wild dogs in the area and just checking the perimeters. I mean massive home ranges of up to 45 square kilometers full. So it's quite interesting and, and a lot of the, the, the research papers and stuff that I've read on Wild Dog and, and my own observations over the years that when a new pack forms it's very important to watch um, how they, they rest together. So if we have a look in the road there's a whole pile of them now uh, lying up in the road and they all lie very very close to each other in the majority of the time. And what that means is that there's a very, it's a very close-knit pack and in terms of new packs forming um, packs that do not lie when they rest very close to each other have a almost 70 percent less chance of becoming a successful pack than packs that lie close to each other and that's when new packs are forming so there are only two or four animals in those packs let's move a little closer So, a little info from George Ann. Thanks very much. It says, if this is the half tail pack, we're missing the floppy eared member. That is very true. And as I said, there are only eight dogs here, but we have seen another, another dog well down near the Arethusa Lodge itself. And she was the pregnant female, so the alpha. Um, and it's possible that the other members of the pack might be with her. And they might be looking for a den site in that area and excavating while the rest sort of scope out the the rest of the territory around here, um, checking scent marks and stuff, and still hunting. They could definitely eat again. And even though you can see there's a little bit of blood around this one closest to us, around his face. But they will let the alpha feed first, especially while she's pregnant. And if she begs, they'll even regurgitate the food they've already eaten and give it to her. I'm just going to update the vehicles quickly to where they're lying down. The stations on my dash are now lying up on Buff Skull South, uh, about 200 meters from the junction with Pipeline. Sorry, last station, go again. Kobe, thanks. Um, I'm not reading you very well, but make your way. There's only one station here. Kobe, thanks. Hi, Colleen from Winnipeg. Uh, Colleen would like to know, do wild dogs only have one den or do they have multiple dens like hyenas? Um, they have multiple dens and for the same reasons that hyenas and a lot of other um, speak, they will move to another. So they do have multiple dens.
amazing animals. Um, so there's a, quite a few different reasons why they are so heavily threatened and endangered at the moment. Um, one being the fact that they need such massive home ranges, uh, ideally. Uh, and there's very few parts of Africa where you have those mass areas um, that animals are able to roam free in. And, oh no, here we go again. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see now. And the other is that they are so prone to disease, uh, especially domestic dogs disease. What have you seen? Just checking. Um, things like canine distemper and rabies. And because they are such tight-knit um, communities and, and such a, soci a social animal, those diseases spread through, um, through the, the pack very quickly. Um, and also they were persecuted very heavily um, by the first European settlers because of the way they killed and because they are such efficient hunters. Um, looks like they're taking a break. I'm trying to, I'm hoping that they're going to decide to rest here for the day or in this area. I think they might move as the sun moves. Hi, Pammy from Seattle. Pammy would like to know, what does the pack do when the female gives birth? Because they travel so fast and so quickly, um, do they stay in the area and look after? Pammy, that's when it becomes much easier to see wild dogs is when they do den because they become, for once, tied down to a certain area for a short time. Um, and that is the time where you, you, you do get to see wild dogs a lot and regularly. 